This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion fail not. It is new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to him, trust in him, and he will do it. For we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his predetermined plan. If you will, open your Bibles to the book of Job. Open your Bibles to the book of Job. We're continuing our survey of the Old Testament. Uh, we have already looked at Ezra, Nehemiah, and we also uh, took a brief look at Esther when we were surveying uh, the book of Ezra. And so now the next uh, book to look at in a survey form is the book of Job, the book of Job. Now, Job is a, a picture of why sometimes we as believers suffer unjustly. It is not unjust suffering when you're suffering because of your own bad decisions. It is unjust suffering when you are making good decisions and yet you're still suffering. And so we will begin this survey of Job. Now, Job is uh, is, is a, 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 a believer who is prosperous. He is righteous. As he go about his business and as he live in the world, he live the spiritual life. And every believer who is living the spiritual life or living a exemplary life in the world become a target for Satan. Or you become a threat to Satan's program in the world. And so Satan would do everything he can to get you to question the goodness of God. To get you to question the goodness of God. And so we'll begin looking at uh, Job 1. And let's look at verse 1, uh, first of all, to learn a little bit about this man's character. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was blameless, upright, fearing God, and turned away from evil. And so verse 1 shows us something about the character of Job. Job was a mature believer. He was a mature believer. He was a believer who was actually living the spiritual life. Blameless don't mean he's perfect, but he was living the right way. He was living a, a life well before God and also before man. He was living an exemplary life before man. And God had prospered this man. He had blessed him. And God had a hedge of protection around this man. So nothing can come into the life of Job unless God allowed it. And so whatever comes into the believer's life is either sent by God or allowed by God. Sometimes God does uh, send suffering. But a lot of times the suffering that he sent is not designed to cause us to fall into sin. If suffering is designed to cause if, if suffering causes you to sin, then that is not from God. But Satan will take suffering and try to use it to get believers uh, to sin. But God will allow suffering but to test or develop the faith of, of a believer. And we're going to see Job is going to be tested by Satan because God cannot tempt us with evil. God would not allow suffering with the intention of wanting to get us to fall into sin. So anytime we are tempted to fall into sin through trials or adversity or suffering, it is Satan who is behind it. Job is an example. 
of a godly person who suffers unjustly and tries to come to grips with the question, why God? I don't know if you ever uh, entertain uh, that question, why God? Why me? Why did you allow this to happen to me? But Satan will take it this as an opportunity to discredit God by showing that God, the only reason Job is serving you and worshiping you is because you're blessing him. Remember, he is a righteous man. God have blessed him and his family, gave him wealth, gave him uh, 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 material uh, uh, things. He was, he was uh, uh, prosperous health-wise. But Job is going to have a question because he knew from what we see in verse one, who he was as a believer, that he was a believer who loved God more than he loved anything else in this world. He knew that. But God allowed this believer to suffer. What would you do? If God allowed you to suffer as he allowed Job to suffer, because when you see how he suffered, many of us, won't, we won't show up in church on the next Sunday. Many of us will give up prayer. We won't, we'll stop reading our Bibles. You know, evolution came about from a man who was suffering. And he had the why question. How can a loving God allow my daughter, who is innocent, to go through such a horrible time of suffering. I don't believe that there's a God. I don't believe that God exists because if he did, he would not allow bad things to happen to good people. <laughs> and therefore, he went out on a quest to explain creation apart from a creator. Out of his resentment, out of his bitterness, he bought in to say in line that there can't be a sovereign creator of the universe. Because if it was, he would not allow this to happen to my daughter. And so he questioned the existence of God. And Satan just rolled his back. And therefore, I think we all at some point have been influenced by evolution. And that's where it came from. Someone trying to explain creation apart from creator in their bitterness, in their resentment, in their not being able to answer the question, the why question. Satan always seeks to discredit God and show that men only worship God for what they receive from him. Men only love the blessed. They don't love the blesser. Because when you take the blessing away, what are you going to do? Then that reveals, do we truly love God? So chapter one and chapter two is all about the ruins of Job. It's all about the ruins of Job at the hand of Satan. So this explains that not all believers who are suffering is suffering because of their own bad decisions. Sometimes we suffer even while we're making good decisions, pursuing the plan of God. But yet, Satan want to do everything he can to hinder your advance and your effectiveness in the plan of God. He wants you to become bitter. He wants you to become angry and mad at God so that you can just throw in the towel and give up. Can I get a volunteer to pick up reading at verse 2? Uh, verse 2. Rising up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of women. For 
Joe said, if you have ten sons have been and encouraged God in their heart, this Joe did not continue. Keep going. Now there was a day when the son of God came to the presence of God. They were you for where you come. So here we see in verse 10 through 12 that God had a hedge of protection around this mature believer. And nothing can come inside of that hedge unless God allow it. Even Satan had to get permission from God and what he wanted to do to the believers. So God permitted and allowed Satan to test Job, but he could not take Job's life. Now, just because a person is prospering, not always mean that that person is honoring the God, honoring the Lord like Job is. Uh, uh, Sometimes people can be prospering, and though that prosperity may not be from from the Lord, if it if that prosperity keep that individual uh, believer uh, from serving and worshiping the Lord or keep him distracted, but Satan in verse ten say the only reason. Job is worshiping you is you got a hedge around him you have blessed him and if you put your if you take away the blessing then i guarantee you he would not worship you i guarantee you he would not serve you and so that's what we're going to see in, in chapter two if you go down to verse uh, 13 now on that day when his son and his daughter were eating and drinking Wine in their oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Joe and said, The oxen were plowing and a donkey feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans attacked and took them. They also slew the servant with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of the Lord fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servant and consumed them and I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another also came and said the Chaldeans formed three bands and made a raid on the camels and took them and slew the servant with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another also came and said your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house and behold a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they died and I alone have escaped to tell it. So Job here have lost everything. He have lost his possession. He have lost his children. He have lost his servants. He have lost everything. And look at his response. Verse 20, then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and he worshiped. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Here we see that Job had mastered the details of life. What do we mean by Job had mastered the details of life? Kind of like Solomon at the beginning of his reign, when God asked Solomon, what do you want me to give you? And, and Solomon said, give me wisdom and give me knowledge so that I may rule your people whom you have made me king over. And they said that God was pleased with Solomon's request. See, Solomon did not ask for the details of life, money, fame, none of that. He asked for the main thing, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom that I may honor you, that I may fulfill my responsibilities to you. 
And so Solomon, at the beginning of his reign, his love for God was more important than anything in this world. And so Job response to trials and adversity demonstrated that he loved the blesser more than he loves the blessing. You know, his children is a blessing and a gift from the Lord. His possession, it all was a gift from the Lord. But look what he did once he lost everything. See, our happiness should never depend on people or circumstance. It should never depend on our children. It should never depend on how much we have of, of this material world because it will show where our happiness lies when something tragic happens. When something tragic happens, how are we going to respond? Are we going to continue to worship the blessing? Or are we going to uh, 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 um, uh, uh, go into depression or resentment or get angry at God? I remember one time, um, see, anytime I teach the Bible, a lot of time I'm actually uh, either I'm about to be tested with something <laughs> or I'm actually coming out of something. And God had give, give me the lesson first or he about to teach me. I remember I was uh, uh, teaching at a prison in Nashville on a Wednesday night. And I was trying to encourage the guys to trust God and continue to pursue God no matter adverse circumstance. And I, so my question was, what would you do if you uh, uh, lose someone really close to you, like one of your loved ones? What would you do? And I gave them the story about how Charles Darwin uh, um, um, uh, uh, promoted, why he promoted evolution. And, and because I was trying to show these guys how to deal with suffering, how to deal with losing a loved one. And uh, as soon as I left, uh, I got a phone call uh, that my, my, my wife had died with my brother had just got killed uh, in a car accident on the interstate. And so now all that information that I just gave to those inmates, now I have to apply to the situation because I didn't understand it at the time. And then after that, I was teaching at the prison again, believe it or not. And I, on a Wednesday night, and went, got in my car, I got a message that my wife had just died of cancer. And so all these things that I had learned from the word of God, thank the Lord that my happiness did not necessarily depend on people and circumstance, but it only came from my daily intake of God's word where I had, God gave me his happiness as I matured spiritually, where I'm able to uh, uh, lose and yet still have the capacity to continue to pursue the plan of God because the word of God and the spirit of God is the strength that gives us the power to keep on moving even when times are tough. Now, Job had very little information because remember uh, uh, the book of Job was actually, the, the events of Job was in the time of uh, 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 Abraham's time. And so the law was not given. That He had very little information, but yet he was applying the little information that he had about God, and, and, and God blessed him. Uh, but God allowed Satan to, uh, but God knew what I could handle. He knew whether I could handle losing someone back to back like that very close. He knew what I can handle because he never put on us more than we can handle. That's why it's so important to, to, to stay in the word of God. I know you get tired of hearing that basic fundamental principle uh, of the importance of uh, 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 reorganizing your life where your number one priority is taken in the word of God. That should be your number one part. And, and see, we don't say, God, you get in where you fit in, okay? A lot of times we operate like that in our life. We say, God, you get in where you fit in. Well, that's not that's not keeping Christ at the center. No, we put Christ at the center, and then we tell everything else, you get in where you fit in. And in other words, everything else got to revolve around my relationship with God because, now there's a reason for that, because the only way to have the capacity to be able to deal with adverse circumstance, you're going to have to have God perspective in the circumstance. And that can only happen through the mind of Christ, knowing the word of God. Knowing the word of God is the only way we're going to have problem-solving tools for whatever problem come our way.
But anyway, all right, let me give one more one more point before we we close. Go to uh, chapter two, verse one. Chapter two, verse one. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming about on the earth and walking around in it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God, turned away from evil. And he still hold fast his integrity, although you incited me against him to ruin him without cause. God say, I have no reason to inflict suffering on Job because he is a man of integrity, because God is bragging that he is a man of integrity. And I have no reason. See, God has a reason to inflict suffering on a believer who is negative toward his plan, a believer who is out of fellowship in perpetual carnality meaning he choose not to pursue the plan of God. Now, that's a reason, because the Bible says God disciplined those whom he loved. But Joel was not a believer who was pursuing his own, on that. he was not on the my way highway. See, believers who are on the my way highway may be suffering because of their own bad decision. And then, because they're making bad decisions, not growing, then God has to get the bed off and do the divine um, butt whooping. But then sometimes uh, God may allow some believers to suffer just to develop their faith and develop their character. And Job was that believer. That's called suffering for blessing. So Job is a believer who is growing, who, who is who's mature, and he's gonna he's suffering for blessing. So God is actually teaching Job about his sovereignty. He's teaching Job about his sovereignty. And some of us may be suffering as a result of God teaching us to rely upon his sovereignty, to rely upon his omniscient, that he knows what you're going through. He knows uh, 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 where you're at, and he has the power and the ability to do all things. So maybe he's trying to mature us where we apply that knowledge to the experiences um, of life. So we see Job's suffering, however, was unjust. It was unjust. It was not what he deserved. So he is suffering uh, for blessing. When we come back, we'll continue this. Uh, uh, when we come back next week, we'll continue this uh, study of suffering uh, in the book of, of Job. Uh, a lot of people love the book of Job. They like to read the book of Job. But Job, yes, Job applies to all believers, but not all suffering that you may be enduring is suffering uh, is a result of suffering uh, because you're being tested by Satan. Now, most Christians, most Christians, because there is not many mature believers, not many believers are serious about learning and applying the word of God. So most Christians suffering is a result of one, making bad decisions, and two, God is putting pressure on them to get serious about his plan for their life. But you do have those believers who are suffering like Job, where they're growing spiritually. They're serious about the plan of God. They're doing God's will, and they are living the exemplary life, and say hates that. So say going to do everything he can to get you to question God's goodness to hinder your growth, your advance, and also your ministry. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful that you never give us more than we can handle. We know that sometimes, you allow suffering uh, um, for our good and for your glory uh, in the case of Job. And we pray that you would give us the grace and the strength we need if we ever called upon to, uh, uh, to testify of your goodness uh, in times of trials like these. We give us the grace we need to endure and honor you no matter what. Keep our minds and heart until we meet again in Christ's name. Amen. We'll take a 10-minute break and then we'll come back. Uh, after 10 minutes for our second study.